Hello, my name is Blake White, and I work at the Walt Disney Company with our cloud architecture team. Uh, one of Disney's core principles is making magic happen. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Uh, we've been exploring Kubernetes for most of the last year in our own OpenStack environment, Google's cloud, and in AWS. Here are some of the things we've learned. Uh, first things that we thought about were placement. When working with multiple development, QA, and engineering teams, you have to be very flexible, be able to, to work within what, whatever confines they want to work within. Uh, we needed to think about connectivity and data. Different clouds offer different approaches to connecting back to a corporate network. Does the project you're working on uh, need to be able to reach code repos, artifacts, other services in your corporate network? Is there data that needs to follow certain privacy standards? How much latency is tolerable? Do you need to interconnect between cloud accounts? Currently, you can set up a direct connection or VPN with uh, AWS. Google has VPNs, direct connections, and peering. Connections between cloud accounts can be accomplished as well. Oh, oop, wrong one. Uh, AWS has cross VPC. Uh, be careful with that because sometimes when you've got something, one VPC connected back to your direct connect, it can't connect to something else in a different VPC. So there's some, some things to watch out there. Uh, once you figure out what your data dependency is, what cloud you're gonna land in and all of that, you can figure out how you're going to get your cluster up and running. Uh, in Google, you've got GKE, obviously, and it's great. You can get a cluster up and running just a couple of minutes. But if you need some more configuration and customization, you'll want to go with GCE or another cloud entirely if you need to use another cloud. Uh, the ways that you can bring this up, automation, you'll probably want to use something based off of Cube Up or COPS. COPS is a fantastic tool for, for operationalizing uh, Kubernetes. It's a little bit behind on what we want. Uh, so we ended up building things our own, and the main reason for that was because we needed our VPC to be connected back to our corporate network. Currently, we can't set up the subnets and everything like that in AWS or GC without some finagling. So the trickiest part that we had with that was setting up the DNS. Uh, we moved from SkyDNS to KubeDNS. Uh, that helped the cluster a lot, but in AWS, things just weren't working. So basically our DHCP set for the VPC was skipping the Amazon internal and pointing just back to our corporate network, which is what we needed. But Kubernetes was unhappy because it couldn't find all of the nodes. Couldn't. Uh, so we set up a bind server, pointed that at the uh, AWS internal for uh, internal stuff and back to, to our corporate network for everything else, for our internal stuff and normal DNS, everything started working again. That's the sort of thing that, unless you're really in there digging with the add-ons, figuring out what the VPC set looks like, and watching where the DNS is resolving to, you wouldn't really notice that in something that was brought up through automation. Uh, once you've got your cluster up and unfunctioning, it's time to talk about operation. Uh, of the three things up here, a lot of people are talking about deployments and updates and monitoring and scaling. I'm gonna talk a little bit about logging in an enterprise, especially across clouds. Stackdriver, things like that are fantastic, but it lives within your account. How are you gonna query that across accounts? You don't wanna ship everything to a central repository because then you're paying for egress and you're paying for all of that sort of thing. So one of the main things, so what we figured out was keep everything in right next to your cluster and then query only the things that you need. Um, we set up an ELK stack. Be careful where you put your dashboards or else you'll be shipping much more than you thought. And that works really well. Uh, set up tribe nodes, nodes above it and you can query across multiple clouds. Um, it's not the only solution, but it's a good solution. Um, to wrap up, Kubernetes does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but when you need to think about an enterprise and all of its needs, maybe you need to think a little bit outside of it. So get your hands dirty, don't rely on all the magic, make some of the magic happen for yourself.